Yesterday I talked a little bit about dua and uh, afterwards a brother came up to me and asked the question that, and this is something that is commonly asked by a lot of people, especially those that uh, visit us from Pakistan and India, where it's common to have a collective dua which is done after salah. So he asked why if the dua is so important, the dua is not co done collectively after the salat every single time, uh, as we see back home. So the answer to that basically is, first and foremost, we need to understand that there is no right time or wrong time to make a dua. All times are equally important for making dua. There are certain times that the Prophet ﷺ said, they are the times of acceptance of the dua. For example, the time of sunset, the time between adhan and iqama, uh, uh, the time, there's a specific time in Jumu'ah, and so on. There are specific times that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. In one hadith in Tirmidhi, it's mentioned, Dubura salawat al maktubat, uh, after the uh, obligatory prayers. This is a weak hadith, but it also can be used for proof that the dua after the third prayer should be done. However, there is no record of the Prophet ﷺ as a habit doing collective dua uh, with the congregation after the third salat. Okay, so it's not a sunnah to do that. And to try to uh, implement that would be a leading one into uh, doing an innovation or something that was not done by the Prophet ﷺ, which would be basically then tantamount to bid'ah. The question may be then that how come we've always uh, seen it done in Pakistan and India. Uh, the answer to that may be that as Islam came to the Indian subcontinent from the Middle East and from other places, uh, maybe the Imams wanted to teach the congregation how to make dua and they used to do it collectively and then it basically just became a habit. But as for it being supported by the Sunnah, there is no record of it from the Sunnah. That's why we don't do it collectively. Individually, Anybody wants to make dua, this is a highly complimentary, uh, complimented, uh, they should do it, everyone should do it, all times, any time the dua can be done, there's nothing wrong with that inshallah. Today inshallah I'm going to be talking about uh, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and uh, Suratul Hajj. One of the questions that comes up sometimes is that we need to make sure or we need to understand every single aspect of Islam from a logical perspective. Okay, we need to have a logical explanation for everything. And unfortunately, this is not always possible. Okay? And as worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those that claim ubudiyya and to be the abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to understand that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do or orders us to do, we have to accept it, we have to say sami'na wa ta'ana, and we have to obey it. And there are, certain, uh, there are certain examples of that. For example, when a person, he has gone to the bathroom, and after using the bathroom, he cleanses himself thoroughly, then why does he have to come out and wash his face and hands and feet? You know, what's the purpose of that? The impurity has been washed off by making his stinja, okay? So why then we have to wash our body parts? Quite simply because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed us to do so, and without us doing that, the salat is not going to be accepted. This is known as amr ta'abbudi, which is that we do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to do because we are, we, are, we are his slaves, we are his worshippers, we obey him, whatever he tells us, whether it makes sense or not. Similarly, a person, we're going through the month of Ramadan right now, a person might think that, you know, at the time of iftar, I still have a couple of energy, hours of energy left. I think I can drag on my, uh, my fasting for another couple of hours and then I will get more reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, that's not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you. Whether you're, uh, if you're in, for example, in the winter time in Scandinavian countries, your day is going to be about six or seven hours only in terms of your fasting or even uh, more or less around that area seven, eight hours. Okay, so if a person feels, no, I can stretch it for another six hours, you, you cannot, because this is against the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, break the fast at Maghrib time, then you basically break the fast. There is no 
question of uh, arguing against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and using our own logic against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. So we can have so many examples of this. Now if you look at the life of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, each one of the commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him defied logic. Okay, everything that he did defied logic. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to do, a human could not understand it. After longing for a child, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses him with a child in old age, and after a while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, last night we recited it in Surah Safat, slaughter him. Okay, where's the logic in that? Allah tell me, I mean, why am I supposed to slaughter my son that I've wanted for so many years, I'm an old man, maybe I'm not going to get another son after this, and you're telling me to slaughter my son. Ibrahim والسلام, could say that, right? But he didn't. He was set out to slaughter his son, and he was completely and utterly willing to do it. Both uh, Ismail والسلام, and Ibrahim والسلام, both willing to fulfill the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the ayah says, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ when they both submitted themselves, they both became Muslims. And then he laid him down face front so that he could not look at his face. And he put the knife to his neck. But then Allah SWT sent down a sheep to be sacrificed in instead. And then we look at the story prior to that. When Ismail is a newborn baby, Allah SWT says, go and put them in the middle of the desert. Okay? وَادٍ غَيْرِ ذِي زَرَعٍ As Ibrahim والسلام, says himself, that I'm putting my dhuriya in this valley which is ghayridi zara, which is uh, without any type of vegetation, no water, no food, nothing, but put the mother and child there and you know, just do it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do it, He's commanding you to do it. Again, Ibrahim alayhi salam could object and say, where is the logic in that? Where's the understanding in that? I can't make head or tails of it. I can't make any sense of it, but he didn't. He simply obeyed. Again, the building of the Kaaba in the place which now had become inhabited, but to build the Kaaba in a place which was which only had maybe a few hundred people living there, and to make the Baytullah about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then commanded Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam to stand up and make adhan. Wa adhin fin nasi bil hajj. Okay? How far is my voice going to reach, O oh Allah? Okay? I'm going to make adhan. Who's going to hear it? Allah SWT said, no. Just make the adhan. يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَىٰ كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجِّنْ عَمِيقٍ People are going to come walking, riding on animals, and nowadays on different modes of transportation from far off corners of the world, which was what Allah SWT told him is going to happen. Again, Logic dictated that I'm a human, how far is my voice going to reach? But he didn't object, he did what he was commanded to do. So this basically, all of these commands we see time after time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Ibrahim, he's fulfilling the command, and that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has summarized in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِذِ ابْتَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam with many things, he completed them. And then it was said to him, قَالَ إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَّامًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, I'm making you an imam for the people. And that's why again and again in the Quran, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us? اِتَّبِعُوا مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا Follow the way of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam with full conviction and full devotion, full concentration. Don't waver. Do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you to do. Don't think about logic, okay? Islam is a very logical religion, and there are definitely uh, wisdoms behind the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to do. But if we are to look for logic in everything, then we will never find it, and there will come a time maybe that if something doesn't make sense to us, we will just simply say, no, I'm not going to practice Islam anymore because it doesn't make sense to me, okay? And there are people that do that. There, are, there is a person who uh, actually left Islam and he is, uh, has a campaign going on to stop people from fasting because it's damaging, according to him. It's damaging to the human body. It's 
uh, self-torture, it's self-mutilation, and all the rest of these logics that the person has. So this is what happens when a person tries to look for logic in everything. So uh, as slaves, as, uh, as uh, ibad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to uh, understand this very, very clearly. Let me just finish off by saying, what is the word abd anyway? Abd, ibadah, ibadah is from the same word. When you have the word abd, it basically means a person who is under the control of his master. This was what a slave was in the days uh, of pre-Islam and in the beginning stages of Islam. A slave was a person who was full-time at the service of his master. His master basically owned him. Okay, his master owned him and he could do with him whatever he wanted in terms of taking work from him, selling him, buying him, and so on, giving him away, freeing him. This was what a slave actually was. And when we say that I am doing the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's from that same root letter. I am the abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That basically means that I am submitting myself completely to him. And from the time I wake up in the morning to the time I go to sleep, I do exactly as he tells me to do. Okay, so this is what ubudiyah actually is. Being an abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly is. And when we do that, then the same way that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was honored and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him such a respect in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us that same respect and he will love us and he will reward us for fulfilling what he wants us to do and being the true slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us tawfiq to understand and practice what has been said in the hood.